Hello? Hello? OK, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, macros in the data pipeline. Um, so who am I? Let me just introduce myself. My name is Neville. work at Spotify in the music recognition team. And we've been using Scala since uh, early 2013. And then we've been mostly uh, doing data science work with Scala. So uh, I do a lot of uh, scouting and uh, Spark. And also do uh, a little bit of work with Storm and other data tools. Um, OK, so uh, there's a really popular data uh, combo, uh, the combo of software packages used in the data world. So the three of them are Parquet, that's uh, columnar storage. So basically it stores data in a column, uh, column major format and groups uh, values in the column together to, to achieve better uh, compression and uh, I.O. performance. Uh, on top of that, we use Avro inside our data pipelines, which is a serialization format, format ser uh, similar to Swift and Protobuf and uh, so some other formats out there. Um, we use Avro as a strongly typed, so basically define a schema and compiles to Java classes, and then you have a strongly typed representation of your data inside the pipeline. And uh, on top of that, we use Scouting and Spark, so you can write high-level uh, Scala code similar to a typical Scala collection API. You write the uh, pipeline code in that fashion, and then it uh, works on top of uh, uh, hundreds of machines. And so these three combos are becoming very popular lately. And this is uh, what the uh, schema looks like in Avro. Uh, typical schema, so you have a type and a name namespace. I have four fields. They are all typed with the uh, int string and, and whatnot. You can also have nested types. So you can have like multiple lev levels of uh, nesting inside your schema. That's also very typical for complex data types. And this is what a typical type of pipeline, well, not typical. This is a very simplified version, but uh, that's what it would look like. And actually, the Parquet Avro source is uh, from Tapa. They did a lot of uh, early work on that. and. Uh, we, will, we also start using that. So here I have a data source from this input file, and the input type is a account. So you can do a simple map of a tuple two key and value, group by the key, then you can reduce by the value, as simple as that, and uh, the framework takes care of uh, the underlying part. So that's uh, what our daily job looks like, just writing pipelines like that. And, uh, here are a few other things you want to use uh, to leverage Parquet, and namely the projection and predicate. So projection means since it stores uh, data, uh, groups columns together, and in uh, most cases, say you have a log file with uh, 80 fields, it's very typical in our job, and uh, a typical analytic job only wants to access maybe say three or five, let's say our Spotify case, we log everything and you, when a user listens to a track, like time, IP, country, and whatnot. And for our recommendation uh, purpose, we only want the username and the track being listened to and nothing else. And that's a lot of uh, redundant I.O. So uh, column proje projection allows you to skip columns, not to access. And that saves a lot of I.O. column-wise. You can also push predicates down to the reader level because Parquet stores uh, row groups together and row groups as statistics say for the next 50,000 tracks, what are the mix, maximum and the mi minimum lengths? And if uh, the row group doesn't satisfy a predicate, it can be safely skipped. So that skips uh, uh, I.O. In a, in a row uh, measure wise. And this often lead, uh, leads to uh, 10 times or more speed up. So they all sound very nice, right? Uh, what's the problem? The problem is, uh, it's kind of clunky to write. So the native code, you have this uh, very beautiful Scala code that's type safe and you get IDE support like you do dot and then it, it prompts you like get name, get amount and blah. Um, and it, it's very easy to write, but in the parquet code, you have to, since they use string as uh, column names, so you have to st specify them as, as uh, strings. And imagine if you have net nested fields, you have like say account dot amount or dot something, that's very clunky. So strings are uh, unsafe and error prone. You lose the autocomplete. That might lead to a uh, finger injury, unless you enjoy typing a lot. I mean, some people do, I guess. Uh, 
And also, uh, Avro has this uh, convention, they change, uh, well, the convention is used underscore for schema, underscore names for schema, but somehow they change it to, to camel case for getters. Well, that's a Java C, so that gets confused, confused, confusing over time. And also, it's hard to migrate the existing code because you have to rewrite all these. The predicate is even worse. Uh, so look at the, the uh, native example. It's a simple Scala Lambda that returns a Boolean. And the uh, equivalent package is they use a visitor's pattern and you have to construct uh, the predicate uh, syntax tree from scratch. And you have to know the column types and names ahead of time. And in case of string, you have to use a factory method to construct the binary. And then there's also the Java uh, erasure scene where you have to cast uh, Scala float back to Java float. It, 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 no, no, we don't expect people to write this. It's, uh, it's too much. Uh, it, yeah, and it, it's, it's like closure, but, but worse. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that's, the where, that's where the Marco really, really helps. Uh, I played around with Marco a little bit, and once I got uh, used to all the coding and stuff, it's actually pretty easy to, to, to work this out. So uh, look back to the native code, because uh, what we have here is strongly typed Avro class, and the Avro schema is actually attached to the class. So we have everything we need to know about the types, field names, and everything. So we can inspect every object and the expression tree inside the macro and work that out. So what is in the ex expression? This is a typical predicate. Getting an account, which is an array, getting the first element, and then get amount greater than 10, expands into this something, or the compiler does a lot of magic, like uh, converting a box type to a primitive, and then and greater than, and looks like some kind of method invocation. That's fine. Boom. This is the raw version. Uh, like if you do show raw in the in the uh, to the syntax tree, that's the raw version. It has a lot of stuff. And you wish you have a rainbow uh, parentheses now <laughs> to be able to see this. But never mind. Uh, there's a pattern matching and the recursion. So with pattern matching and recursion, you can traverse through the syntax tree really easily and uh, decouple all these uh, predicates back out. Yeah, so this is the projection, improved version. So the signature looks like this. You have an apply method that takes a specific record, that's the Avro record being, being operated on. And the getters, GS, is just uh, a list of whatever type here and returning whatever. And then it, re it redirects to a, Avro, uh, to a macro implementation, which uh, there's, there's a, where it was the context, and then there's your expression tree that the macro has access to. I'll uh, show the code in a bit. Uh, this is the projection. And the code looks like this. So you write basically native Scala code, and it gets compiled to predicate API. And well, for most of our uh, data scientists who doesn't really, don't really know Scala or Java, they can just copy and paste those, uh, those lambdas, and, and it's expected to work. Uh, and this is the predicate, predicate version. Uh, similarly, you have uh, one lambda p that's of type t, that's the Avro type, returns Boolean. And uh, so this thing just gets compiled into the, the filter API dot and, and then a lot of stuff uh, like the example before. So this is how it looks after using macro. Uh, stuff I learned doing this, Compiler does a lot, lot of things, and I have to mimic when you, when you write a macro. For example, uh, the, the uh, Parquet API on, uh, assumes column on the left side, uh, value on the right side, but uh, developers may not. So you, can, you have to, to flip the operators and, and code for both cases. There are also box types and uh, primitive types. And, and nulls, because box types can have nulls, and they, they will fail to cast. So these are the things I have to uh, consider. Uh, type coercion, because the uh, uh, compiler does this uh, magically. If you have uh, longs versus ins, floats versus doubles, you sometimes have to do the conversion uh, behind the scene. Implicit booleans, like dot get bool, 
because if it's a Boolean type, uh, it's equivalent to dot get bool equals equals to true. So these kind of cases you have to consider. And the code is here. We are using it in production, and it's uh, it's working out pretty well actually. Um, So the code is actually surprisingly simple. This is the one for for predicate. Um, some signature here, a lot of maps uh, between Scala internal names and the parquet names, some hard-coded column names and stuff. And the main body of the code is mostly just case and recursion, and that's it. Like there are only two types, like one is the apply type that of interest, one is apply and one is select. Select is where you have name dot something and apply is when you call a method. So yeah, it works out really well, so that's it. Thanks.